shrugging. Oh, we gonna do what they say can't be done. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm easy bound, just watch your bandit run. of drivers I'm sure would like to be in the position I'm in with the great people like Hal Needham. He's one of the greatest men I've probably ever known. Thunderous send-off to Hal Needham. Almost 550 miles per hour and still climbing. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm east bound just watch your band and come. If Hal Needham is anything, he's a true American original. A film director, NASCAR team owner, and at one time, Hollywood's highest paid stuntman. The directors that I've worked with, John Ford, Billy Wilder, Sam Peckinpah, Arthur Penn, and a few hundred others. I've done 310 features and 4,500 television episodes. I worked more than any stuntman in Hollywood. I had a number of actors that used to request me. The star that I doubled the most for like 14 years that got me started as a director was Burt Reynolds. In the late 1970s, Burt Reynolds was the most famous actor in the world. But it was Hal Needham who did the daring stunts that were the trademark of Reynolds films. I've done so many that were death defying, that close to being the end. Following their success with Smokey and the Bandit, Needham and Reynolds partnered with U.S. Tobacco to form one of NASCAR's most iconic race teams, the Skull Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit having come out, Burt being the Bandit, and Skull being the sponsors, Burt and Hal's Skull Bandit. That made perfect sense to me. Their first driver was fellow stuntman Stan Barrett. However, he soon lost interest, and the Bandits went looking for a replacement. Bert didn't go to very many races. It took an entourage and to get him in, but I did have him at Atlanta, and Harry Gant was racing. He really moved up through the field. Of all times for me to run the best race I'd probably run, it was that day. I'm glad I did. That's the best move I ever made in my life. <laughs> so when the race was over, I said, I'm going to hire him, Bert. He said, be my guest. You know, we could really get ourselves laughed right off the track if we tried to be real showbiz, you know? So we wanted to get somebody that would represent us with some dignity, you know, not drive around with a cape around his neck, you know? And Harry's a perfect guy. They call him Hurry and Harry, Handsome Harry, but eventually they called him the Bandit. With Handsome Harry at the wheel, Bert and Hal's Skull Bandit became regulars in Victory Lane, winning nine races, 13 poles, and making Harry Gant a household name. I made him a star. Not all of Needham's ideas were mere gimmicks. He was also an innovator who pioneered the use of telemetry into NASCAR. I think technology is the thing of the future. I also believe that within the next two or three years, you're gonna see all the top teams with equipment like this on board. I just wanna be the first. I don't wanna be a follower, I wanna be a leader. In 1979, Needham piloted his Bud Rocket car more than 600 miles per hour before putting Stan Barrett in the driver's seat. First car through the sound barrier, now sitting in the Smithsonian. No owner in NASCAR history ever had more fun than Hal Needham. After 232 races, Needham's Skull Bandit rode off into the sunset. Once I got into NASCAR, I really fell in love. I miss the rush of watching everybody out there trying to win the race. Being part of Harry Gant running up front. Directing movies was my way of making a living. NASCAR was my passion. 